Now, I said that Bonnie and Clyde was the first major movie to use slow motion, but there were actually experiments with it before that. One of the earliest uses in cinema was in an epic silent film called Intolerance in 1916. This was made by a director named D.W. Griffith, who was experimenting with all kinds of techniques of filmmaking, and he used slow motion just a little bit to accentuate dramatic moments and heighten emotional tension. But two world wars and over half a century passed before it was used in Bonnie and Clyde, in part because the technology had to advance to make slow motion more accessible and versatile. By the 1960s, people were building high-speed cameras, which were capable of capturing hundreds of frames per second and eventually thousands. And this is what allowed filmmakers to push new boundaries of representing time and creating effects that audiences were captivated by. And the 1969 film, The Wild Bunch, two years after Bonnie and Clyde, really helped popularize the technique. And now, of course, we don't even think about it much because it's a staple of modern filmmaking. For example, I recently watched a movie called Wanted, which uses super slow motion every time there's a gun battle. Or you may remember Christopher Nolan's movie Inception, which has these beautiful slow motion dream sequences, especially in the kick moments where they're transitioning from one reality to another. So increasingly since 1967, movies use time warping all the time and the success of this approach has overtaken commercials and music videos and it's a standard tool on our cell phones. <laughs> 